part 2 of HSFC Technical Assisted 2011 Solutions. Let us see what is the first question. For a 3 micrometer diameter optical fiber with core and cladding indices of refraction 1.45 and 1.510, uh, uh, the cutoff wavelength is dash. Okay, so uh, the diameter of the optical fiber is being given. And the refractive index of core and cladding is given. We need to find the cutoff wavelength. So I have written the equation. This is a direct equation to find the cutoff wavelength of an optical fiber. Lambda C is a cutoff wavelength. Is equal to 2 pi A N1 by Vc. Here A is the radius of the uh, optical fiber. Here diameter is being given as 3 micrometer. So radius a will be 1.5 micrometer is the radius. N1 is the refractive index of the core. It is given as 1.545. Vc is the normalized frequency. So in the formula revision video of optical fibers, we have discussed about cutoff frequency or normalized frequency. Vc. Vc is equal to 2.45 for the case of a single mode fiber. If the value of Vc uh, or the normalized frequency is coming as more than 2.45, then it is multimodal fiber. So that is how we identify single mode or multimode fiber generally. So for uh, normalized frequency of a single mode fiber is 2.45. It is a constant value. Okay. Then delta, delta is the difference in refractive indices. It is a parameter which shows the difference in refractive indices. And it is given by 1 minus N2 by N1. Where N2 is the refractive index of the cladding region. N1 is the refractive index of the core region. So all these things uh, is being given in the question. Also Vc is a constant value. So we can directly substitute and find the value of uh, the cutoff wavelength. So first we need to find what is delta in order to substitute. So 1 minus N2 is 1.510 by 1.545. Okay, so if you solve it, you will get it as 0 0.022 will be the value of delta obtained. Okay, 0 0.022. So we can substitute all these values in this equation and find the cutoff wavelength. Okay, so I'm going to substitute all the values. 2 into pi into A is uh, 1.5 micrometer. So it is 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 6 meters into N1 is 1.545 by 2.45 into uh, 2 delta this uh, 2 delta the whole raised to 1 by 2. That is square root of 2 delta it is. 2 into delta is 0 0.022 the whole raised to 1 by 2. So this is the sum you need to actually solve to find the cutoff wavelength. I am telling it again the cutoff wavelength is given by 2 pi a n1 by vc into 2 delta the whole raised to 1 by 2 or square root of 2 delta. Okay, So if you, if you solve it you will get the value as 1.28 micrometer will be the value of cutoff wavelength coming. Okay, So the correct answer is option b which is 1.28 micrometers and this equation is very important. This is the equation to find the cutoff wavelength for a uh, optical fiber when the, uh, the refractive indices and the radius of the optical fiber is given. And also please note this value for normalized frequency of single mod fibers. It is a constant value which is 2.45. Moving on to the next question. Ripple factor of a half wave rectifier is dash. So we have discussed about this uh, ripple factor thing in all formula revision videos and also very uh, a lot of previous question discussion videos. Uh, this question is very important. You need to know that the ripple factor of a half wave rectifier is 1.21. That is a constant value. And for a full wave rectifier, it is 0 0.482 approximately. Okay, That is 0.48. This is the value for a full wave rectifier. This is also a constant. And for half wave rectifier, it is 1.21. These two values are very important. I have seen a lot of question papers uh, asking this question. Uh, can be uh, full wave or can be half wave. Both are important. Okay. So please do note this down. Please do by heart. It's very easy to study also and very important. Okay.
the next set of questions is this which of the following is not a causal system okay so some of the equations that is characteristic equations uh, of some systems are being given you need to find out of the options which is not a causal system so uh, we have discussed about the causality property i'll explain it once again for a system to be causal means its output that is y of n depends only on the present and past inputs yeah if the uh, output of the system is depending only on the present and the past inputs then such system is called a causal system and specifically the system's output doesn't depend on the future inputs okay that is uh, the output function or the output is depending only on the present and the past input not depending on the future inputs okay so that is uh, called a causal system now let us see the equations of various systems the first one is y of n is equal to uh, e raised to x square of n okay so here uh, the the output which is y of n is depending only on e raised to x square of n n means the current input so if it is consider n is equal to 0 then y of 0 is equal to e raised to x square of 0 okay so it is only depending on the present input so since it is depending only on the present input it is a causal system the first one is correct second one y of n is equal to a into x of n plus b here also if y of uh, put n as 0 y of 0 is equal to a x of 0 plus b and consider if y of 2 y of 2 is equal to a x of 2 plus b okay same as the uh, that of the previous one that it is it is depending on the current input only y of 2 is depending on x of 2 only so since it is the present input the system is a causal system moving on to the third option y of n is equal to x of n square okay so put n is 2 y of 2 is equal to x of 2 square is 4 okay so the y of 2 that is the output at the position 2 is actually depending on the input at the uh, at position 4 that is the current output is depending on future inputs so the system is not a causal system okay so the correct answer is actually option c anyway let's look into the option d also y of uh, n is equal to x square of n so uh, for example if y of 2 then x square of 2 again it is only depending on the present input so it is a causal system all the other options are causal except option c because it is x of n square it is so if it is a 3 it means y of 3 is equal to x of 9 so it is actually depending on a future input so you have to uh, think in this way to find whether the system is causal or not that is for systems which uh, in which the output depends only on the present and the past input uh, such systems are called uh, causal systems and it is not depending on the future inputs and if it is depending on the future input that is output uh, at a particular position or at, at a particular point is depending on the future input means it is not a causal system correct answer is option c moving on to the next question a very lossy lambda by 2 long 50 ohm transmission line is open circuited at the load end the input impedance measured at the other end of the line is dash that is a transmission line this is a transmission line at the load side it is uh, open circuited okay so when uh, the load side is open circuited means what will be the load impedance is that i will be infinity right so when a particular point is open circuited means the impedance will be infinity you need to find the the input impedance is said i at the other end so zi equation is the characteristic impedance of the line is at zero by the load impedance okay so zi is equal to is at zero by zl is infinity so whatever be the 
value of z0, 1 by infinity will be 0 only. So, the input impedance will be 0 ohm is the value of your input impedance coming. Now, how to find this? Here, the load is open circuited. So, when load is open circuited means it is having an infinite impedance. In order to find the input impedance, zi is equal to z0 by zl. When zl is equal to infinity, zi will be 0 ohm will be the value of your input impedance. Okay. Next question is this. The intermediate frequency of a super heterodyne receiver is 450 kilohertz. The intermediate frequency is 450 kilohertz. If it is tuned to uh, 1200 kilohertz, the image frequency is dash. So, uh, the source frequency or the RF frequency is 1200 kilohertz. Intermediate frequency is 450 kilohertz. What is the image frequency? Okay, so the equation for finding the image frequency FIM is equal to the source frequency FS which is 1200. Uh, if the system is tuned to uh, 1200 kilohertz means that is the source frequency or the RF frequency. So, FS is 1200 plus twice intermediate frequency FIF which is 450. So, this is a, a direct equation. Okay, so we can substitute 1200 plus 4, 2 into 450 kilohertz. Both the values are in kilohertz. You will be obtaining 2100 kilohertz is the value of image frequency obtained. So in super heterodyne receiver, what is happening? There is a mixer stage. Okay, so the there is a source frequency. There is a local oscillator. There is a local oscillator here and it is producing a local oscillator frequency. This is a mixing unit or mixer. So, uh, what happens is that when the value of the source frequency which is being fed to the mixer is greater than uh, there is in the mixer state an intermediate frequency is produced. I will explain it. In the, in the mixer stage, what is happening is by mixing of this local oscillator frequency and the source frequency or your input frequency, an intermediate frequency is produced. Okay, that is FIF. The intermediate frequency is actually calculated based on the difference between the source frequency and the local oscillator frequency. If FS is greater than local oscillator frequency, the intermediate frequency is Fs minus FLO and if the source is less than local oscillator frequency means FIF or intermediate frequency is equal to FLO minus Fs. So this is actually the equations for calculating the intermediate frequency but in this question directly the intermediate frequency is being given to you. Okay. So, this is how actually the mixing stage is producing the intermediate frequency by you taking into, by mixing of uh, the source frequency and the local oscillator frequency based on this relation. If Fs is greater than FLO means Fs minus local oscillator frequency. If Fs is less than local oscillator frequency means it will take the difference of FLO minus Fs and hence you will be getting the intermediate frequency. And uh, in this question, they are not asking the intermediate frequency, but they are asking what will be the image frequency produced. And the equation for finding image frequency, we have already done the problem, but I will explain once again. The image frequency FIM is intermediate frequency plus, sorry, source frequency, FS source frequency plus twice intermediate frequency. Okay. Source frequency is this input or your uh, that is the system's actual uh, the system's frequency to which it is tuned to which is source frequency and FIF is the intermediate frequency uh, which we are producing by mixing of these two okay so in this question directly these two values are being given intermediate frequency is 450 FS is that is it is tuned to 1200 means it is the source frequency that is also being given. So, directly you can find the image frequency. Anyway, the answer obtaining is 2100 kilohertz is the answer for this question.
Moving on to the next question. If Z transform of X of N is X of Z, what is the Z transform of X of N minus K? Very, very simple. In DSP, we will do a lot of uh, problems, block diagram, uh, drawing of all those things by using this relation and by taking the Z transform and all. So, if X of N, if X of N is a transform, is capital X of Z, we generally take, okay. If it is X of Z, then X of N minus K is a transformers. Z raised to minus k x of z. Okay, so this is the z transform of x of n minus k. Consider it is n minus 2. That is, we are taking x of n minus 2 and we are going to find its z transform. Means the result will be z raised to minus 2 x of z will be the value. Okay, so general equation is x of n minus k is z raised to minus k, x of z is the z transform. Question is this, an electric ion designed for 100 volt AC supply was rated 5000 volt. This is the power rating of the electric ion. It was put across 220 volt. Assume that at 110 volt it supplied 500 watt output. This is the power output at 110 volt. The output at the new voltage is dash. The new voltage is actually how much it is? 220 volt. That is it is put across 220 volt and you need to find what power it is producing. Okay. So uh, it is being given that assume at 110 volt it is giving 500 volt. So P is equal to we know that power equation is V square by R. Right. So from this equation the value of resistance of this electric ion R is equal to V square by power. Here V is 110 into 110 since it is square by P is 500. So what will be the value of R obtained? R is 24.2 ohm will be the value of the resistance of the electric ion. So this electric ion is having a resistance of 24.2 and it is put across the new voltage is 220 volt and we need to find the power. So directly we can substitute in this equation and we can find the power. V square is equal to 220 is a new voltage by resistance is 24.2 and the answer obtaining is 2000 volts. This much is the new power obtained when the electric ion is put across 220 volt. Okay. The correct answer is 2000 volts. Next question is a theory question. The critical angle theta c, it is the angle at which the total internal reflection is happening. Of an optical fiber is dash. Theta c is equal to sine inverse of n2 by n1. So when a light is traveling from one medium to the other medium, if the angle is uh, greater than critical angle, then what happens? It undergoes total internal reflection. It bends back towards the, uh, the same medium. Okay. It will get internally reflected. So, the critical angle is given by sine inverse N2 by N1, where N2 is the refractive index of the second medium. N1 is the refractive index of the first medium. And theta c is the critical angle. For the questions which I have included in this video, I hope that this video was useful for all the people who is preparing for the technical assistant examination. And if you found this useful, please do give it a thumbs up and share this videos with maximum of friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.